In this video, we are going to try to mimic a close-up version of these, uh, the lights sparkling on the water. I'm using this reference photo that I pulled from unsplash.com and hopefully that will kind of help us visualize. So first things first, um, I'm using gouache and first I'm going to paint a layer using gouache kind of like watercolor. So I'm getting my watercolor block wet with clean water and then I'm picking up some dried gouache that I have on my palette and using it just like watercolor with the wet on wet technique. And the trick with water is to, when you're painting moving water, is to capture lots of different colors and to leave the contrast between the colors. It's definitely tricky and so it's kind of a messy process, but the, the using the wet on wet technique helps to, at least for me, it helps to um, capture kind of the blurry aspect of it and to uh, get all of the blends together. So I'm using this basic wave kind of shape where I'm just taking different shades of blue and making waves kind of randomly throughout the painting and then cleaning off my brush periodically and blending the paint in with clean water onto the wet paper. So with the waves, I'm really just trying to create kind of like a ripple effect. And it's important to note that for this specific painting, once we put the sparkles on top, it's kind of going to pull everything together. So there's no need to make the, uh, the base layer exactly perfect. We just need to add different shades of blue in that basic wave shape that leaves behind some white space. So I did that and then I let the painting dry and now we're going to use gouache a little bit more like um, a little bit more like acrylic on wet on dry and uh, we're also going to re-wet some of the areas to help it blend in a little bit more. But by creating layers in the water we help to create that depth that water has. I think that painting moving water can be so tricky because there's so many different layers of color and light in water. It's, it's really tricky to capture it because it's so wild and unruly, right? Water, I think, is like some of the most, like one of the most um, potent examples of just pure chaos. <laughs> right? Because it, it's uh, it, it's a liquid. It doesn't hold its shape. It does whatever it wants. And based on how the earth is moving, it kind of just splashes around and crashes with no rhyme or reason. And so I think knowing that helps when I try to paint water. But there are also some tricks that help. Like, for example, when you're painting a wave, uh, usually the middle part of the wave that looks like a triangle is darker and then on top of that it's lighter and that's because the sun is shining on top of the wave and then underneath the top is where it's kind of cast in shadow and so knowing that trick if i'm painting you'll notice that i'm painting a few kind of wave like triangles in a darker color and then i'm taking a lighter like a white color and blending in that light whiteness on top of the wave and that's to help to create the shape to trick your eye into thinking that I'm not painting a line and a triangle but instead I'm painting uh, a wave and uh, breaking down complex shapes like that is one way to make painting kind of real life things a little bit easier I'm not trying to paint a wave I'm just trying to put the colors in the right places. And uh, it's definitely a tricky skill. I've been trying to practice water for years and I feel like I'm just starting to kind of dip my toe in. I'm not perfect and this painting won't be perfect, but keeping those rules in mind with if the sun is coming like from above or just behind the painting like if you can picture the sun just behind the painting above it and it's shining right on top 
of these waves and the dark parts are what's in shadow, then that is what helped me kind of figure out where to place the light and dark parts. But if that's even like kind of tricky to visualize for you, that's okay. The most, really the most important part is to have both light and dark on water and to have all of the in-between. That's one of the reasons why I really like gouache because with gouache, as opposed to with watercolor, you can paint on a dry surface, like on my, on my dry paper. And even after the gouache has dried, you can re-wet it. You can rework it with a wet brush and blend it right in to wherever you've placed it, even after it's dry. Uh, and it's kind of like oil paint in that way, uh, but less scary. <laughs> I, um, and so that's what I'm doing in a lot of these waves here. When I paint like the triangle portion or the shadowy wave part, then I'm adding the uh, gouache, the white gouache on top of it. Uh, then I can kind of blend it in because it's gouache and because it's still wet um, and make the lines a little bit more blurry, which is makes it look slightly more like water. Um, I will say that I have mostly painted water with gouache in this way, and that's because I think that, especially when you're just starting to learn to paint things that have white in it, it's easier to use white paint. If I were just using watercolor, I would, in the traditional sense anyway, I would be using masking fluid instead of white gouache to kind of mimic the uh, shape of, to mimic the white spots and the sparkles. Um, but I think that's trickier. So we're using gouache right now. And okay, so here I have painted most of, I've painted the water and now I'm just adding some sparkles while the paint is still a little bit wet. That's just to give myself a shape. The sparkles with the, where the sunlight is kind of sparkling on top of the water is gonna be in like a loose zigzag wave kind of shape. And so while this water is still wet, I just kind of wanted to lay down a base layer for the sparkles to help give them some depth when I paint the actual dry ones and to help kind of give me a guide, I guess, to where they're supposed to go. But white white gouache, when it's wet, um, after it dries, say significantly duller. And that's because if you're using it while it's wet, like with a lot of water in it, the water dilutes it. And so it's not quite as stark, um, which is really what we wanted. And then for the really uh, vibrant sparkles, the ones that are going to pull this piece together, I'm going to use white gouache straight from the tube. And this technique is, uh, we're going to put some gouache uh, in the paste-like form right on the waves here. And then using the dry brush technique, I'm going to make them look like they're kind of sparkling in the sun, like sparkling with your eyes. So uh, the, in order to do that, you have to use a mostly like a pretty dry brush and then just flick upward on the wet paint. The trick is that you have to do it while the gouache is still kind of wet, but not so wet and thick that you just like paint a thick stripe. You need to use a dry brush so that only parts of the paint come upward. And so you're painting like these textured streaky sparkles where you put that paint. Sometimes I use a big flat brush and sometimes I use a small flat brush, um, as you can see. And uh, it, it might take some finagling <laughs> if you've never painted sparkles this way before, but it's a pretty cool effect. So you just, after you've painted the first few, um, then take your paint and lay down a few more dots and uh, as you can see, I painted, as we go on, I painted a few more dots um, than I probably should have before I started the sparkles again, because if they start to dry before you can take out your dry brush and um, paint those like rays of light, the paint's not gonna move. And so it's definitely a dance between um, painting, like waiting enough time so that the paint 
doesn't just like move in thick strokes, but not waiting so long that the paint eventually dries and so you can't move it anymore. But once you have the dots down, then just do the same thing that we did for those bigger ones where you take a dry brush and uh, paint those with that dry brush texture, paint upward and downward to create those rays of light sparkling off of the water. And then we're using that same shape that I painted the sparkles with initially, which is kind of like a zigzag wave kind of shape. And that's because when light reflects off water, the water is still moving, right? Water is pretty much always moving, um, especially if it's in the ocean. And so we want to mimic that kind of natural, unruly shape. Um, I don't even want to say pattern because I don't think it's really a pattern so much, but um, for that wave shape, the best way that I've been able to mimic it is to do like that kind of zigzag, imperfect um, line down through the painting. And so for the rest of these sparkles, I'm just doing what I told you, putting down the sparkles and then using the dry brush technique both up and down to create the sun rays. And that's a wrap. I think that this uh, painting is obviously imperfect, but I had so much fun trying to capture the waves and the sparkles. And as I mentioned earlier, I think that the sparkles are really what pull this piece together and help make it look like water. Uh, for reference, we can look down at that reference photo, but again, I'm not trying to paint that whole thing. I'm really just trying to get a, a close-up look so that I can practice the dry brush technique and the sparkles on the water. I hope that this tutorial was enjoyable for you. Um, if you decide to try it and post it to Instagram, I would love to see. Please tag me. My handle is this writing desk. And if you like my videos and want to see more, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>